Hi, I'm Slade. I founded the Spanish Academy of South Africa 27 years ago. Firstly, I sincerely hope that you and all your loved ones are doing extraordinarily well. I'm so appreciative of the role of your intentions, giving me the privilege of experience in guiding you to become a prolific Spanish speaker. So I was not born a Spanish speaker. However, the circumstances that I were confronted with was that my mother was addicted to antidepressant tranquilizers and she used to mix it with alcohol, which caused my youth to be brutally difficult. However, if I had wanted the mother I'd always wanted, I wouldn't be the man I am today. So I would definitely, unequivocally, not change anything for the world. Due to my circumstances, I grew up as a very shy child with a very low image, lower than a belly of a snake. I was really just a really depressed child. And I remember, you know, when my friends were playing Batman and Robin, I was running around the house throwing alcohol down the toilet. And what this caused me to realize was that the only way to get out of a depressed state is to do something that would cause me to feel good. So I found this out, out, I found this out at a very early age. When I was at school, if I saw that, for example, a child was being bullied, I would help them. And by helping that child, because intrinsically, that's kind of my nature, you know, I'm quite soft-hearted, I'm uh, quite a sensitive person, but by doing that action, I just felt so good. If somebody was alone and I could see that that person was not fitting in, I would definitely approach that person and I would feel good because as we know, our bodies are designed incredibly well. What happens is, as most of you do know, when you do good, you just feel good. When I read up about things, because in my later age, I became a voracious reader, I learned that your body has certain neurotransmitters. And when you do good, you feel good because your body gets flooded with things like dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, those good neurotransmitting feelings that come from that action. Well, nature is very clever because it's nature's way of getting people to look after each other at the end of the day. So if people would just do more good, they would feel better. And obviously, as we know, when things are good, they get better. And when things are bad, they get worse. Because if you're feeling good, you'll attract things from the universe into your environment that will keep you feeling good. And the opposite is also true. Well, I just loved helping people. And the teachers could see this within me. So they always pushed me along the pathway to become a teacher because by being a teacher, most definitely you're helping people. And for me to improve the quality of people's lives is a huge thing. Now, obviously I do this to help them to break the walls of communication. But when I found out that families and students have immigrated or traveled extensively. And I was able to increase the quality of their experiences substantially. Well, then I just feel good. Those neurotransmitters are flooding my system. So basically, after the last year of school, I went to the Johannesburg College of Education to become a school teacher, primary school. I went for. I couldn't get into one of the mainstream universities as my marks were not high enough. I always say that I was in the part of the class that made the upper class possible, if you know what I mean. I wasn't academically inclined. So I went to the Johannesburg College of Education and I really didn't enjoy the structure of how we were being taught. So I left and I went overseas for a few years and then I came back to Johannesburg and I worked in a gymnasium, helping people to lose weight and helping very thin people to put on weight. 
because teaching is something that I do naturally and motivating people. And you'll notice throughout the course, I will always give you motivational quotes and things that I've read through my own journey. And I just know that it will benefit you. So when I was working in this gym, as a young child, I was always infatuated with Selma Hayek, that actress from Mexico. I mean, this woman was just absolutely ravishing. One day, I didn't know if it was providential influence or just very fortuitous, but in walked this girl that looked even one grade higher than Selma Hayek. I couldn't believe it. My heart jumped out. My hairs stood up. I was tingling in places that I never knew I had places. I really thought this is the one for me, this girl. She was like 18, I was around 20. Still, I was quite a shy kid, you know? But I had to go up to her because I worked there. I went up to her, I asked her, can I help you? She says, no hablo English. I don't speak English. She just came from South America to Johannesburg like a week before. And the story is her mother, the most prodigious teacher, got a very high position in a very prestigious school in Johannesburg called Rodin Girls School. She took over the Spanish department. So she brought over the daughter and her son and the granny. And they had just arrived in Johannesburg. So the lady who came into the gym or the girl that came into the gym or the love of my life, as I thought at that time, who well, I knew if I could get this girl, I would be living the dream and I would never have to wake up. In any event, she didn't even come into the gym to join. She actually came into the gym to put up a poster on the notice community board to look after babies because somebody can look after babies in a country where they can't speak the language because she couldn't speak a word of English. I couldn't speak a word of Spanish. So how was I going to break this communication barrier? I mean, I had to work this out. So this is what happened. Un momento, por favor. I mean, how would she be susceptible to my powers of persuasion if she could not have the capacity to understand me? I had to break the communication barrier. Well, that was the catalyst that I needed to get myself off the launching pad. We all need a reason to learn Spanish or to do anything. I mean, whatever you decide to do, it's definitely you doing it because you think that you're going to feel better by having done it. Whatever your vision is and whatever you want to manifest in your life, well, it's because you're going to feel better from attaining that thing. I mean, that's why we humans get into action. We need a reason for doing something. If your reason for learning Spanish is immigration, that's great. If it's for traveling, that's great. Whatever it is, I'm going to help you get it because I know that when you break the communication barrier, your whole experience will change. But I'll talk about that a bit later. So now what am I going to do with this girl? How is she going to be susceptible to my powers of persuasion without me breaking that communication wall? Well, I went straight for Spanish lessons. And by the way, the recreation center, which was next to the gym, had classes of jewelry, dancing, languages. Well, I walked into that class and the teacher didn't speak one word of English. Now, there's three common denominators why people just cannot become a prolific speaker. And I'll tell you this over my 27 years of experience. Firstly, the teachers do not teach in English. Now you might think, well, so, well, so that means you don't understand the word that she's saying. You'll be like the proverbial salmon when the current is always against you. It's like trying to swim against a tsunami. It's like trying to catch smoke. You need the teacher to teach you in the language that you understand when she shows you how it works. Because if you need to have a methodology, you need to have a system that you understand. The biggest problem with education is that the teachers know their subject so well. But there's a problem when they try and process the information over to the students that the students can internalize and understand. Now, the reason is because Number one, the teacher doesn't speak your language in the beginning, so you don't understand a word that she's saying to understand the system or whatever she's trying to teach you. The second common denominator is the teachers have never learned Spanish themselves. 
So how are they supposed to understand the mindset of an English person? What we're going through, the tribulations that we'll face from an English perspective. I mean, it's not their fault. They're born speaking Spanish. They've never learned Spanish. So they don't identify with you that well. The other reason is that they start the academic approach. Now, the academic approach, the academic approach is destructive, counterproductive, self-defeating, self-sabotaging, and will lead to your capitulation, your capitulation and demise. Really? The reason is because when they start, and if you open up any textbook from around the world, or you go to any app, or you go to any course, just besides learning phrases, there's no real system for you to become a prolific speaker. And by starting the academic approach, which was the third common denominator that the teacher used, remember, she didn't speak in English, she doesn't understand the mindset of the students because she hasn't learned Spanish herself, and they start on the textbook approach because, I mean, it's not the teacher's fault. I aspire to be as amazing as teachers out there. It's just that they have to teach from a book that they, that they are given by the school or the college who, or whoever. So the, what I mean by the um, academic approach is, for example, when you open up a textbook, you'll see that they'll do this type of thing. I speak, yo hablo, you speak, tu hablas, he speaks, el habla, she, ella habla, we, nosotros hablamos, they, ellos hablan. This is called conjugations. When you go, I speak, you speak, he speaks, etc. I want, you want, he wants, etc. You'll see it all the time, all the time. You'll see a child there or in the book. I am, estoy, you are, estás, he is, esta, we are, estamos, they are, están, Esto oh my lord, are you kidding me? You'll be in a constant state of discombobulation. I mean, if you start that way, well, I had to speak Spanish, so, I went to the recreation center, as I discussed, as I mentioned to you, and I went into class and I didn't understand the thing the teacher was saying. And then she starts doing conjugations. Well, obviously she's doing conjugations because she doesn't understand the mindset of an English person. I mean, that's not the most advantageous way to start from an English perspective. I mean, but li uh, little does she know, of course. So I walked out the class believing erroneously that I couldn't do it, and the students too. Now that's an erroneous belief because we took that belief from what happened, but that was so erroneous because if there was another way that could have been more conducive for an English person to learn, we would have all got it. Because as people, we can be, do, and have anything. I mean, there's nothing that we can't be, and be have, and do. There's just no way. I mean, I'll discuss other things like that during the course so that when you wake up in the morning, you just say, life is good, life is easy, great things happen to me, you know? I mean, you've got to get in a mindset like that in order to have a, a life that you have to become a deliberate creator. But in terms of the Spanish, I mean, I thought I couldn't do it. So now listen, this is the goal for me. Nothing's going to stop me. Because, you know, when you've got a vision there, and a vision is a clearly articulated, results oriented picture. And you believe in that vision, nothing will stand in your way. And when you believe in that vision, the cooperative components of the universe will get together and come into your life to make that come to fruition. Let's go uh, back to, let's get back to the story. As I said, I give a lot of personal development things because it's just incumbent for me to help you to aspire to do anything you want, you know? And you just, there's a procedure that has to happen. But what I did was, so I couldn't get the Spanish with her having gone to what I just went through, as I mentioned to you. Now in my area where I was staying, there was like a main road and we had to walk up that main road for our homes to get to the gym or to get to the shops. Now she was living in the same area as me. So we would be walking up and down the same main road quite a few times. And obviously I would smile so wide that I could eat a cucumber sideways. And after a few times when we were walking in the same direction, her and her brother would wave me over to their house and I met the mother and the granny. And I sat in the table and I just heard Spanish, you know, that's what I heard. Obviously I didn't understand one iota of, of what was going on. So I decided to teach her English 
because I've always had a temperamental proclivity for teaching. And it was just a joy for me to teach her. Well, obviously I was in the same room as her, just being in her presence was, I mean, even too much for me to handle. But in any event, it took about three or four months for me to teach her and her brother English. After that three or four months, they could speak quite well. You know, teaching is not something that I am. It's just what or I should say, it's not what I am, it's what I do in, in a way. You know, it's just a natural thing. So they could speak English. I wasn't uh, trained to be an English teacher whatsoever. So, but I got them to speak. And now I could tell her how, I've, how I felt about her in English. I had to go that way. Well, she didn't play easy to get her. But I never gave up. And she finally gave in. Man, she moved into where I was staying in my flat. And for the next few years, life was sweet. You know, the colors are brighter. Now, during that time of living with her, I said to her, out of respect for you and your family, I really need to speak Spanish. So what I did was, I just had hundreds of pages. I wrote out a sentence in English, and I asked her, how do you translate that for me into Spanish? And she just gave me the translation. She couldn't teach me, but I could use her like as a Google translator. In those days, there was no much, there wasn't much internet at all. And I mean, God forbid, what we went through, I don't know, but I think what we do now. But I did it the old fashioned way, which is actually, it worked out much better in the big picture of things, you know, because I was writing. And I'm telling you, when you study with me, you must write. Eh? You take a pen, get a jotter or a notebook in front of you, have colors next to you, and have a pen, because I'm going to give you lots of extra bits of information. So I used to write these sentences out in Spanish and English, and it took me a few years to get this language, but I didn't stop because I was enthusiastic, you know? Enthusiasm is the fuel that runs the engine of momentum through the tough times and keeps pulling you in the right direction. I wanted to leave the shores of mediocrity when it came to Spanish, you know? Well, after a few years, I could speak it, man, but in all the tenses, I was really a prodigious speaker. Now I thought, what if I could do a biopsy of both languages see how they work. Well, obviously I know how English works, but just do a bit, a bit more of a biopsy and work out a way to teach English people Spanish and to be able to diminish that time for them to be a total beginner to a prolific speaker that would just be unheard of. I mean, something crazy. So I thought about it. I can do it. I was determined, unrelentless in my pursuit because I knew how I could be a positive influence in people's lives. Because if you can speak Spanish and you're traveling or immigrating, your advertisement is your communication. You know, you let people into your mind and then they can see how you are. And then you can be warm and generous to people and they can be warm and generous back to you when you're traveling or assimilating into a culture that only speaks Spanish immigration or just traveling. I mean, people will open up to you like flowers to the sun. And then you can feel their generosity and their warmth. And what happens is you start developing a rapport with people, even for business, eh? When you get that rapport with someone, you start a likability factor starts to develop because you're getting to like each other through your communication, the breakdown, it's been broken down, you can communicate. Your communication is your advertisement to people into your mind. And then when you become likable, you develop a rapport, people start helping you. And we need to get where we want to go with people. People need to help us. And we like helping people too. That likability factors everything. Because the more they like you, the more they want to help you. And we need help. A mentor of mine said, when you see a turtle on a lamppost looking at the beautiful view, he didn't get there by himself. We need to get there. And then we start developing trust with people. And that makes life sweet. Especially if you're moving to a new country. Life is crazy enough with the move. You need trust. People who like you. People who you like. They help you to get where you want to go. That's so important. So I had these pieces of paper. And I said to myself, I'm going to teach you. Spanish to English people. And I'm going to start this way. 
So I did the biopsy of both languages and I said, this is how they should have taught me. This would have been the ideal way. I didn't even know if I could do it. So I put an advert in the paper. Funny enough, I was living quite close to a hospital. So the first few students that came to me, they were doctors, you know, in the, in the medical industry, people with PhDs and masters and doctorates. I just, my education, I just got the last year of high school. It was quite intimidating. These people had more degrees than a thermometer. I didn't know if I could deal with these type of people. I haven't got an education hardly. Well, they came in. I gave a lesson or two, got a, some good feedback, man. I said, was this a luck? Let me do some more lessons. Did some more lessons. People who've got the masters and doctorates were telling me that I was showing them things that they would never have understood, or they tried to learn Spanish for many years, and they never understood certain things, and I was already showing them. I was feeling good. Eh? I thought, I'm onto something here. Let me keep going. And I kept going, and I've kept going. And this is my 27th year of teaching. Yeah, it's been a blessed life. And now I've got staff that work for me, and it's just amazing. And the way we help people, life is sweet. I'm living the dream. And they said, yeah, it's laid. This is lacquer. I can do it. And then after 27 years now, I mean, I just get better and better because we're always improving. I mean, you've got to be, when you green, you grow, you know? And if you think you're right, you just right. So it's always, I'm always learning. You'll see in a few months' time, I'll, I'll change something that's better. I'll get an idea or something. Or... Something will happen. Even a student will give me an idea. People are all amazing. You're amazing. You've got a brain. You can't believe it. I'm going to show you how to liberate your right side of your brain. And you'll give me a good idea. I'm telling you. So now I'm teaching and things are going really well. On a daily basis, you've got to make a decision now that you're going to study. Eh? And you've got to have a vision in your mind now exactly what you want. You've got to feel as if it's happening already and you've got to feel good about it. You see, one of the secrets to the secret is you've got to feel now how it would feel as if that dream, that desire is actually being fulfilled now. That feeling, you must have it now as if you are doing it. Use your imagination. Remember, Einstein said, logic gets you from A to B, but imagination will take you everywhere. He also knew that when you imagine things in your mind's eye and you have a vision, remember a vision is a clearly articulated results oriented picture of a future you intend to create. It's going to come in. You've got to have the faith there and have that feeling as, as if it's happened. I'm sure you've read books on personal development and things like that. If you haven't, that's key. So I just wanted to give you like a story of how I got to the stage of my life. 